Controller Fortnite has peaked with unknown armies' impressive performances in the Winter Royale. He is living proof that controller players can compete at the exact same level as keyboard and mouse players, possibly even better. So now that everyone knows the potential controller players have, how can they truly unlock it? But it's not as simple as it seems. We have some insane tips and game-changing topics to go over in this video that will surely improve your gameplay to a great extent. Now before we dive in, if you want to learn how to play exactly like these pro players, check out ProGuides.com where we have the best coaches in the world. Sign up for our membership today and get exclusive access to master courses by players like Benji and Mongrel. If you want to go more in depth and explore all the different aspects of competitive controller gameplay that you need to know in order to succeed, head over to our Pro Guides website and be sure to go sign up and start improving rapidly today. Combat mode is when you have the weapons out and ready to fire. Being in build mode is great for being defensive, but being too defensive can oftentimes mess you up big time especially when playing against pros and top-level players who know how to take advantage of an overbuilder. Oh, you're overbuilding over there, dude? <laughs> nice try. I'm coming for you. For example, let's say you're boxed up inside of the zone and you're holding walls while an opponent shoots their AR at you. Sure, you're safe for now, but in a few moments, other players will hear the gunfire and will start turning heads and all their focus will be going towards you. During the end game, the main goal that pros have is to deal as much damage as possible to everyone else in the lobby. This will reduce the people alive and increase their chances of getting their placement points as well as the victory royale. This causes most players to join in on spraying and targeting a single opponent as this is deadly. No turbo buildup can stop three players shooting directly at one, and this is exactly the kind of situation you want to avoid. What we suggest doing to avoid these is using your building in areas where it's necessary and making sure that you have some sort of high ground. It's much harder to target an opponent that has high ground because they either get shot down and they're able to box up at a lower point, which closes off angles, or they're able to stay up there long enough until other players get to high ground themselves. But guess what? You're a little bit higher, so they end up getting targeted. Another very important mindset to have is focusing on your aiming and shooting more than your building. Instead of instantly pulling out your builds every time you see an opponent, predict their location and be ready to fire the second you see them. Be Nostradamus, dude, predict the future. Many of the top controller pros like Forbes and Unknown do a great job of only using their builds when necessary and mainly using their aim and deadly predictions to confuse and take out enemies. Although editing and building courses are great ways to warm up and improve your mechanics, almost nothing is as good as straight up running 1v1s and practicing your skills in the game. The problem with edit courses and building courses is that you can't actually apply your editing and building skills to any in-game scenarios. You're constantly practicing doing specific edits and building maneuvers without any real application. For example, you could be in a build fight where you need to make an edit from an awkward angle. Most editing courses consist of one angle for each editing maneuver it offers in its practice. Practicing that edit a hundred times in that editing course will make you fast, but only fast when hitting it from that angle. That's why you need to be putting yourself in different situations where you'll be forced to do a variety of different maneuvers quickly. Now, of course, there's the argument of if I'm going to 1v1, then why not just jump straight into arena or public matches? Well, jumping into lobbies will warm you up over a great period of time, but you're not getting constant practice. Every game, you have to wait to load in, drop off the battle bus, find weapons, and then fight in scenarios where you may not even need to build. This could mean that it could take you 10 times longer to get a good warm-up in for building and editing when you could have just done creative 1v1s which gives you constant practice without any breaks in between. The reason we stress practicing your mechanics before hopping into games is because being able to pull off clutch edits and multiple moves consecutively are crucially important if you want to be successful during build battles and other close encounters. And more importantly, mechanical skills are very important on controller because it's easier for keyboard and mouse players to be versatile and speedy with their movements, whereas controller players tend to have more delays and pauses in between clicks. So we've talked about warming up, practicing building, practicing editing, but what about perfecting your most important skill, aiming? Bullseye, buddy. Let's jump in. Although we could have included this in the last section, Aiming is without a doubt the most important aspect of controller mechanics and gameplay in general, so it deserves its own section. Aim training is a very popular thing done on keyboard and mouse where players use things such as Kovacs and aim training softwares to develop their aim and their reaction time. Controller players don't have access to these programs as they're designed specifically for mouse, but luckily for controller players, Fortnite provides its own aim training within the game. 
And this is thanks to the hundreds of AIM training creative maps that have been created. Here's a link to another one of our videos that provides some of the best AIM training courses that you can use to improve your AIM today. Watch through the video and be sure to plug in those codes so you can start practicing and improving your aim as soon as possible. Aiming is by far the most important aspect of competitive controller play, as having good aim is one of the strongest talents that most controller players have. You can literally watch any pro controller player play, and you'll instantly realize that they hit almost all of their shots. And this is not a coincidence. These players become the best, a huge part due to their aiming. A key rule in Fortnite is that if someone has an angle to shoot you, you'll always have an angle to shoot them back. So if you always hit your shots, you'll always have an advantage as there's a good chance that they will miss theirs. Cause they're not practicing dude, not like you. Similar to keyboard and mouse players, controller players need to have keybinds and settings that work well for them. Sure, Tifu may use his own specific sensitivity that makes him really good, but that doesn't mean Mongrel uses the same one. Almost all pro players have different sensitivities and this is for a good reason. All players have different strengths and weaknesses. Some players have very fast reaction speeds and play better on fast sensitivities, while actually playing pretty bad on slow ones because they're naturally more speedy, and vice versa. You'll want to find out what type of player you are and then optimize your settings so that you can reach your peak. God mode, dude. Let's go. Let's start with aiming and your sensitivity. First, you'll want to hop into a public lobby and spend some time playing some normal matches. Pay very close attention to your playstyle though. A lot of times you'll find that you tend to be more twitchy and can be impatient at times. If you're a player like this, you'll most likely play better with speed sensitivities as you're naturally more reactive and speedy. But if you find that you like to stay back and play calculated, plus, you know, you don't like to get into those stressful situations, you are most likely a slow sensitivity player. We suggest testing out slower or higher sensitivities based on your platform and then optimizing them to your needs. Every time while you're playing, you'll find yourself transitioning from one thing to the next. Whether it's from taking out your pickaxe and then switching back to your weapon, or going from build mode to your weapon, or even from one weapon to another, there's lots of different transitions in the game that you're going to be doing. A lot of times these transitions will cause delays and can even mess you up during fights. Let's say you're pickaxing someone's wall and attempt to take it. A lot of times good opponents will be waiting for you to swing out your pickaxe so that they can quickly edit their wall and take advantage of that delay that you're going to have when you switch back to your weapon. In order to enhance your transitions, you'll need to do some quick and easy things. First, make sure that you don't transition in moments where you're not 100% safe. Switching to build mode or taking your pickaxe out when there's enemies nearby can be futile to your health as it'll give anyone needs you an open window of time to damage you. You can use visual and auditory cues to be able to predict if you're safe or not. Secondly, make sure that you're using those transitional cues to fool opponents. Since a lot of good opponents will be trying to wait until you take your pickaxe out to try to break their wall, what you could do instead is actually take your pickaxe out for just half a second and then quickly switch back to your weapon before your opponent even opens the wall. This is a pro-level trick used by pros like Booga in order to outplay their tricksters. Improving transitions is very important for controller players as this is what will allow you guys to spend the most time in combat mode without wasting any time doing anything else. And for our final tip, we highly suggest that you guys put the majority of your focus on your in-game intelligence. Sure, being able to crank 90s quickly and building plus editing well can be great, but you can't actually get to the top of pro-level gameplay without making smart plays and being a big brain. Almost every amazing controller player is carried by two aspects of their gameplay their aim, and their incredibly smart gameplay. This is perhaps the most important tip that we can give you guys, simply because many controller players believe that improving their mechanics to match those who play on keyboard and mouse is their best way of reaching their level. But this is simply not true. Being a smarter and more adequate player will always benefit you more as a controller player, and especially as a competitive player. To do so effectively, go ahead and watch your own gameplays more and recap on your decision making and mistakes. Find reasons as to why you died in your games and find ways to fix those reasons. Whether your weakness may be in rotating, awareness, or decision making, you can always improve just by targeting that weakness and addressing it firsthand instead of trying to overcompensate for it by mastering other things even more. In the end, controller players are extremely talented and have great potential to win millions in Fortnite events. Just because they don't have all the advantages of keyboard and mouse players doesn't mean that they can't skillfully be better. All right, you controller masterminds, that's it for today's video. We hope you enjoyed. 
Comment down below what you thought and what you'd like to see next. We strive to bring you guys daily quality content, so do us a favor by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and show ProGuides.com some love by using code ProGuides in the item shop. Thanks for watching. Once again, it's your host, Cody. You can follow me on Instagram at Coco Medler. Are you cuckoo for the Coco Puffs? Let me know. Stay positive, stay appreciative, and keep practicing. You guys got this. You are mini beasts. Believe it, and you will achieve it. Peace out, y'all. See you on the next one.